Here we have part 17 of my video walkthrough of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and I've just finished dungeon number 6. Um, to get to dungeon 7, we just want to uh, warp back to the light world, uh, pull up our little birdie thing, and uh, head up to Death Mountain. Which, um, unfortunately I forgot that there is uh, something that I needed to do before heading to the Death Mountain. Um, after completing Dungeon 6, the uh, bomb shop, which is uh, where Link's house is in the Dark World, um, sells the super bomb so that we can enter the pyramid, and I uh, forgot to do that. Fortunately, I, um, it's not too far out of the way, since we do have the uh, birdie to help us out here. Boy, oh boy, it was a little bit before I remembered. Uh, the reason it's a good idea to go and uh, deal with the pyramid before entering Dungeon 7 is because after exiting Dungeon 7, you just head straight to Dungeons to Ganon's Tower. So, uh, it's not really a, a good time to do it after now. To drop yourself off at point number 4, which is Link's house. I was a little hurt, so I decided to go ahead and grab a heart. There's usually always three hearts inside Link's house, in case you need some life. Um, what we're going to use is the Swamp Portal to uh, get back to the Dark World, which uh, all it takes to use the Swamp Portal is the Magic Hammer. Pretty easy stuff there. Although I do wonder where the stone that was in my hands disappeared to. Re-entering Link's house here is the bomb shop, and we want to buy the super bomb. It costs 100 rupees. It's uh, kind of like the treasure chest; it'll just follow us around. So we gotta walk. Can't Pegasus dash. I don't even think you can jump off cliffs with this particular thing following you. Just uh, work our way back to the pyramid. Shouldn't be uh, too hard of a journey here. It's all the same old, same old that we've done before. And there's the cracked wall. What you want to do is Pegasus Dash when the bomb's in front of it to drop it off. It has a timer. In case you uh, mess up, you can always go grab it again. And uh, inside here we have another of these pawns. And what we want to do is throw in the sword and the bow. Throwing in your sword and the uh, fat fairy here will upgrade it to the level 4 sword. Alright, it's yellow now. And, um, I go ahead and use a fairy just to empty out one of my bottles. And uh, if you throw the empty bottle into the pond, she will fill it with green medicine. Which will give me one red, one blue, one green, and one fairy. Which is uh, just what I like to run around with. And then finally we want to throw our arrows into the pond which um, you actually have to do this because uh, she'll upgrade them to the silver arrows which is what you need in order to kill Ganon so uh, make sure you do this at least at some point in time alright which um, the silver arrows do uh, twice as much damage as the regular arrows I think not for sure exactly I know they do more damage at least but anyway, um, back onto our journey here. Time to uh, head up to Death Mountain. Gotta love our little uh, bird friend though. Makes travel around the world map a lot quicker. I really hate the little stone things. 
I don't even know what they're called. They're just annoying. Not really much to talk about just yet. Same old path that I always take through Death Mountain. Head up the uh, ladder here. Then we're going to want to head to the right and uh, do the old Spectre Horror Rock warp around trick. If you notice, the uh, list is now full since we finished the sixth dungeon. We now have all of our uh, Y button items. I think it's the the Y button. Just, uh, keep working our way to the right here. There's a fairy in here. If we smash that open. Um, if you drop down, there's a bunch of caves, but uh, there's not really anything important in them, which is uh, why I didn't bother going into them. But you can explore them if you want. Um, pick this stone up and head up here. Uh, what we need to do is hit right, up, and then left. This will create a dark world warp, which puts us on top of Turtle Rock. Which, in order to enter Turtle Rock, we need to use the Quake Medallion, as shown by the pretty little picture. Which, um, I guess it's called Turtle Rock, because, um, it kind of looks like a turtle. And there we go. This dungeon is, um, not particularly hard. It's uh, very straightforward, I have to say. But, um, the enemies are very high, high scale level of dangerous. The, uh, puzzles are a little tricky sometimes, too. Um, you notice I'm using the uh, Cane of Samaria there, on top of one of the mysterious features of the red block, is it makes uh, little pedestals for us to get around in here. And I'm heading to the right here is uh, one of our first tricky puzzles. What we have to do is light the four torches and go through the room in the north, but we're trapped on this little railway track. Um, Got to use the uh, fire rod. And uh, what you want to do is try to light these at the last possible moment that you can. If you uh, light them too early, they'll go out before you have time to go through the door. Something like that. Uh, works pretty good. Got some little uh, spiked rolly things. Again, just uh, kind of dodge them. Not particularly hard, as long as you're uh, patient. Um, in that chest there, we got the map. And we got a small key. Just small keys are always good. Ooh, accidentally got hit there. Um, I like to leave that pot there until after I did that because it's a full magic restore in case you messed up a whole bunch. And, uh, heading up to the next room. Um, here we have a room with the uh, spinning tile things, which, um, this one's pretty easy because if you just stand on the doorway, they uh, can't hit you. And uh, since we got to wait for them all to go before the door opens anyway, just uh, stand here. It's uh, kind of boring, but uh, it is the safest way to do it. Notice the uh, pattern's kind of like a little skull. I always thought that was cool. And, uh, up here we got a full magic restore and a fairy. It's a really pretty boring room. 